Okay, uh, please note that the sheets which you have got today uh, contain the one part of it is the ER thing. That is the only thing we are doing in this session. The remaining parts of it are for the afternoon. They are not meant for this session. So, please ignore them for now. So, only the ER, the one sheet is for this session. Yeah, the railways and the other, the second, there are two questions, two parts. Yeah, so the first problem is the railway system with uh, stations, tracks connecting stations, trains, schedules and bookings. Okay. So, the first step in any such design is to identify the entities so i think that is a relatively straightforward task here although there are several alternatives there are several possible ways of doing this but let's uh, start um, i think everyone will agree that a station is an entity it's no problem there Everyone agrees that a train is an entity and a passenger booking is an entity. So, what remains is uh, what is a track, what is a schedule, these are the two things and then of course, there are relationships between these entities. So, um, in the uh, description here, what we mean by a track is a single segment of track between two stations. That is a simple model. So, what should a uh, track be? Should it be an entity? Should it be a relationship? Relationship. Yeah. For the purpose of this uh, thing, it is good enough to make it a relationship. Although, there are uh, many reasons why you might uh, treat it as an entity. Um, we are not going to do that, but for example, if you uh, want to um, you know, keep track of track maintenance and other things about a track. You may want to treat a track as an entity, uh, but since we are not doing all that, all that we care about is that there is a track between two stations, we could treat track as a relationship. Okay, let me put it down here to give space. So, it is a relationship between two stations. Okay. Now, uh, what are the attributes of a station which you would assume? ID, name. So, we will stop at that. Uh, certainly, there are many other things you may want to put in. If you have put it in your design, that is fine. Okay. What about uh, train? What are the attributes you would expect? ID name. ID name. It is probably good enough for our design. Um, now, the key thing is that uh, train schedule um, and uh, there is also this issue of what does a booking relate to, we will come to that in a moment. Um, so, first of all, let us uh, deal with the train schedule. So, what is the train schedule record? It says, um, you know, at what time does a particular train pass through a particular station and there is also a sequence number, uh, which is, this is the first thing, this is the origination point, which could be 0 maybe for the train. Then there is 1, 2, 3 up to the termination point for that train. And we also need to record the time when the train passes through a station and we have made some simplifying assumptions here that every train runs every day and it finishes its journey within the same day. Otherwise, you have to keep track, you know, if you are just storing time of the day, that is not good enough. You have to know that is it on the starting day or is it on the next day and so on. So, to simplify our life, we have uh, pushed all that under the carpet um, and we are going to store 
the time in, time out and the sequence number. Those are the three things we are going to see. So, now how should we do this? How should we record this? Yeah. And for that relation we have the attribute time in and time out. Exactly. So, that is the simplest representation although others are possible. So, we can give this whatever name we want train uh, schedule maybe or train station. Now, what are the attributes? That is time in. Sequence number. Time in time and time out. Time out. Yeah. So, uh, I saw at least one or two people had uh, modeled this as an entity. Uh, if you do that, then the schedule entry, the, the point where a train enters, a the, the fact that a train is going through a station, if you model it as an entity, it has to be related to a train, it has to be related to a station and it has to have these attributes. So, that is a possibility where this is turned into an entity with two relationships on either side and these would be the attributes. So, that is a possible alternative. Although, for the purpose of this particular uh, simple design, it is not required. This is simpler. Okay. Uh, what is the next one? Uh, passenger booking. So, what are the key things in a booking? We need to uh, have a train. So, the booking has to be related to a train. So, what do we do? Create a relationship. give it any name, say booking for, booking is for that train. Um, booking has to um, also be related to? Passenger as an entity over there. Yeah. So, passenger books for the train. Yes. And for booking we can have the uh, entity uh, attributes like the date, coach and other things. Yeah. So, so, we could model passenger as an entity. Let us uh, start with uh, not bothering with that okay. detail and then we will modify it to add that because the question said do not model it. But in reality, yes, there are good reasons to model a passenger as an entity. So, um, w what all does a booking have? It, you need to know that the booking is from on this train from this station to this station. So, so, we have a from and we have a to. So, both are to the station. There are two relationships between booking and station. Uh, should this be a ternary relationship or uh, two binary? Two binary. There is no particular reason to make it ternary. Um, they are kind of independent of each other. Um, what is next? You, you could make it ternary also. It doesn't really but cause any harm. Yeah, so yeah. It is better to keep them yeah. separate. Conceptually, it is better to keep it separate. Okay. Uh, what else? Hmm? Uh, it would be related twice to station with the two roles from and to and then uh, connection to booking. Uh, destination is the to, the from is the start. No? Source is the from, from and to. That is why we have two uh, relations with uh, station. I have issue like uh, mm. now we, we cannot check, make a constraint mm. that a particular bo booking which has made from and to whether mm -hmm. the train has a stoppage over there or not. Yes. That's a that uh, that's that, a good that point. we cannot model. You Necessary that two also supposed to exist. Which exists? The booking from. From and two. So two, if from is there, then two must be there. Actually, both must exist. Right? Yeah. So, so how you can? Uh, okay, I have not shown the constraints here to ensure that both the from and two exist, and also you cannot have from being related to to, to two different stations. So that is going to ensure that both the from and the two will exist. Uh, 
how we can uh, uh, put the instance which from in which to this like ensures example, the booking has these two defined for sure like for example we are booking from pune to mumbai yeah. okay so booking contains the uh, how we can uh, represent this uh, in this particular uh, so uh, there will be one instance of this relation the from relationship which relates this booking to uh, pune and an instance of the to relationship which links the same booking to mumbai therefore it's from pune to mumbai yeah both are related to this entity in the relational uh, table sense yes that would be a booking id in a table somewhere uh, so coming back to your question uh, how do you enforce the constraint that uh, this train actually goes through these stations so i have it by the solution yeah. also in mind like yeah see we have instances of this uh, schedule for instance yeah so what if we of course that could be through aggregation what so mm -hmm. that. what if we relate booking with the with the relationship yes that's uh, that that sounds a bit complex but it it is possible um however we have to relate it to two different instances, yeah, instances of, the relationship, of this, absolutely the from and the two yes yes and now how do you make sure both of those are for the same train that problem comes back yeah that so it's an interesting question uh, mm -hmm. there are some important constraints uh, but it seems non trivial to enforce those constraints on the er model Other directly solution, like i imagine my diagram is yeah. somehow as attributes in the booking um so if you were to for example you could have a you can't do it at the entity level but if you do it at the table level you can have a train id and then a sequence two sequence number you know what is the starting and what is it is a sequence number for this train um so this is an interesting thing uh, so it if you create a table it's easy to do this if you do it through this how do you do it the the, the constraint we, the problem we, is the constraint the academic we, people want to keep do yeah. these two things existing se in separate space er model and relational model yes. there are distinction and disjointness yeah so actually another interesting question is if you took this uh, relational model what is the corresponding er model which could have given us this relational model so in case you didn't follow the discussion for the others uh, the idea was um, in the booking we can have a train id and uh, from sequence number and a two sequence number and because this is a sequence number for a particular train in its root for this train we can be sure that uh, it's the same train which goes through. so it enforces that constraint yeah, implicitly by keeping a uh, in some sense a discriminator okay so um yeah so if if you had uh, the stop as a weak entity so you you had proposed that uh, train schedule instead this relationship becomes an entity we could model it as a weak entity yeah. and which is dependent on train and uh, it has a sequence number which is a discriminator so let me uh i, I think let, let's finish this and then do it. i think we have almost done with this right uh, what is left here uh as per uh, the statement here all we need is uh, booking id coach seat number and name okay i think uh, that completes the design as stated now we will modify it and try to do something else to it yeah so only we can ensure that timing and hours yeah only uh, time in will be there time, no time out but it the station will get sequence number so, so if from uh, sequence uh no the problem is uh, if if you take the terminating station there is a time in but there's no time out for that so we can model the you know the last station by having uh, no time value out. for time out 
default it will be hard. It, the Null in this context would mean does not exist because there is no time when it goes out. Uh, of course, it leaves the platform, but that is an operational thing. As far as the passenger is concerned, that is it, the train terminates there. Now, after that, it is not the same train, it is just a set of coaches which will now become part of another train, maybe. For example, you want to find out the, all the trains which start with one particular station and ends with particular station. How to find out? So it requires something value uh, whose time out is this one and time in is uh, because starting station has a time in zero, yeah. time out is something and at the end station is like that. So for that we require something to Some be there. Some special value. So again from the we point of view of query, just like we are discussing that if it visualize query, what query we want to fire on this particular database and then uh, go for the database. So here we do require that. It's also, yeah, you, you need to know what is, so sequence number 0 could be the starting station, but how do you know which is the ending station? So you could uh, ignore this and take a max of sequence number for that train and that would be the terminating station, but of course your queries are going to be more complex. So this is a nice example where from the point of view of the query, it makes sense to specify exactly what you will have here. Anyway, you need to do that. For the first station, you need to specify what is the value of time in. And the only meaningful value is null. There is only a, a non-null time out. And correspondingly for the terminating station. So in this particular case, even if you ignored the query, just by specifying what values have to be in the design in these two end cases, we have already solved the query problem. So I don't think in this case we needed to worry about the query, but certainly there may be some cases where you have two design alternatives, one of which makes it easier for query. So that can happen. Suppose I say that it is terminating station, so let me put null for the timeout. Yeah. If there is a situation where for in between station, I don't know what is the time in. At the moment, I don't know. So still I am forced to put null uh, there, right? That is also or I don't know the timeout. If you created a schedule, I assume you would know the time in and timeout. But there are many other alternatives. For example, so uh, that we creates can say, the ambiguity. Uh, we can actually. have two booleans: uh, start station and end station. So both are uh, boolean, uh, yes or no. Uh, well, we don't normally give the type, but in this case, you know, we could always have a tag which says that this is the starting. Then we don't have to worry about uh, what is the value, whether it's null or some other value. So we can look at this and say, if it's a starting station, I'm going to not even look at time in. If it is an ending station, I'm not going to look at time out. So that's another way. Uh, that's another option. You could put it here. Yes, you could do that. So there are. Uh, it won't be an ID. Um, say the problem is. The it has to be a relation. Start station and end station. Can you we think of uh, multi-value? Uh, Again, that would duplicate it because the train schedule already has that information. But you could create it explicitly to simplify querying. Especially sequence number 0 is the start station. Yeah. Can we use that in the Yeah. That's, that's so the. Any station only one, one flag you need for station. That is true. So we could. So there are many alternatives. We could get rid of this. 0 is start and you could do that. Instead of having those two relations uh, from and to, can we think of having multi-valued attribute for Here? representing the same? For this? For uh, st from station from and to. For the booking? For the booking. Uh, no, you can't really have a multi-valued attribute. Then how do you know which one is from and which is to? Then you have to figure out the schedule of the train and you know it gets more complex. So that doesn't make sense. And furthermore, the problem is if it's a multi-valued attribute, the other thing that it relates to is an entity. Therefore, you cannot make it an attribute. It has to be a relationship. So again, this keeps coming up. Whenever you're, you have something which is relating to an entity, it absolutely cannot be an attribute. It has to be an entity, a uh, relationship. This should be the form sequence, the f form station. Mm -hmm. The sequence number should be less than the two uh, things. Yes. That is, then we can have a multi-valued attribute with the sequence number both? That is certainly possible. Uh, so that 
uh, this uh, relational design in the end, which in the booking you have a train IDs from sequence number to sequence number. We need not you can easily impose a constraint that this is less than that. Uh, so mm. that could be a valid thing. So then, uh, actually, then we we don't require two uh, relationship. We we can make a single relationship with multi-valued to form and the sequence number. Uh, no, multi-valued doesn't make sense. But let me uh, answer this question in a different way. Now, note that both of these relationships are total and many to one. When we convert to relations, what we will end up doing is in booking, we would have a, um, a from a station ID uh, and a to station ID. Um, so, but if you want this, the sequence number to come in there, we could have uh, maybe used this uh, alternative design which was suggested, which um, I'm starting on a new design. This one is complete. Um. Sir, uh, for a termination station, the from and to are say equal. No? For the that which For one? a termination station, time out, time uh, out time yeah. should not be null. For a termination station, in time and out time are the same. Um, I don't know if you can, that, that makes sense. Because mm -hmm. what we have done in our design is assume for intermediate stations where the train does not stop, mm -hmm. the in and out are the same. Mm -hmm. um, for the termination station, it, we should not use that convention. So there are different ways of representing data. We have to state the conventions. Uh, some of these are not stated in the ER diagram. We have to state it separately as uh, these are the other constraints in there. So for example, the constraint that um, uh, both of these uh, things have to be on the schedule of this train. You can state that in English, but you cannot represent it using the constraints we have available on the ER diagram. This is a more complex constraint, which you can only state in English at this point. You can't use a standard notation. But that backup is always there. UML also does this. You can always specify a constraint in English in UML. And uh, that is acceptable. And as you can see, there are going to be things which, uh, you know, what do we have after all? We have a handful of constraints, which are standard constraints. Now, it's clear that not all constraints can be enforced using these few things. So anything else can be either in English or predicate logic or whatever. You specify it somehow and state it along with the diagram. So that is one solution to this particular problem, which uh, he had raised. To how to enforce that both of these are on the root of that train. And this is before this on the root. So those are all constraints which we can do in English. Uh, if you want to try to enforce it through other means, uh, this alternative design where we create an entity here. Uh, let me redraw this below. Let's call it train stop. Sequence number will be the discriminator. Time in, time out. Okay, this is a weak entity. Uh, so it has to be identified by a strong entity, which is the train. So we'll have to give this some name. Um, let's call this TS. For lack of space, I'm abbreviating and time, okay, we are running out of time. And uh, the train stop obviously has to be related to a station also. Okay, this train is enough to identify uniquely the train stop. So th this could be the identifying entity. Okay, so that's a double diamond. This train stop is identified by a train and the sequence number, um, but it also has to be a station um, and that also has to be a unique station. So this is one way of doing it. Uh, again, there is another constraint which we have not enforced that consecutive sequence numbers should be connected by a track. Uh, we have not enforced that anywhere. So there are many, many constraints which we are not enforcing. This from and to will go to. Huh? This 
from and to will go to the stop now. Okay. So, now the proposal is that um, from and to relate not directly to station, but to? Now, it takes care I guess. Okay. Now, what happens is, uh, when you fold these into this thing, the, you are going to use the primary key of this. What is the primary key? ID and sequence number. So, in the relational schema you will get from that, you will have actually a uh, train ID, um, you will have uh, that is one train ID. If you just do a straightforward mapping of tables, you will not have one, but three train ID from sequence number, train ID to sequence number. Where are these three coming from? One is coming from here because this is also by the way, I did not show the constraint. This also has to be total and mini to 1. So, from this you will get train ID. From this one indirectly you will get train ID sequence number which you will call from sequence number. And for this one similarly uh, train ID to sequence number. But now we have a constraint that all these three have to be the same. This is not expressed in the ER diagram explicitly, but we can write it in English that all three have to be the same. Therefore, we can delete those and keep just one copy. So, if we started from here and used this extra constraint to remove redundant attributes, we could have landed up with this final design. So, um, so there are good reasons maybe to use this design over the previous design, but again it is a trade off. So, we did all this work to be able to enforce one constraint but we are still not enforce some other constraints. So, th there are trade offs there. Sir, yes, uh, a particular station can be a uh, halt of two different train. Yeah. And sequence number will vary. Yes, that is fine. Then uh, the sequence number is derived from the train ID or? No, this is not for the station. The sequence number is for a particular train. So, this is a weak entity identified by that. Train. So, uh, each train will have its own uh, sequence number, uh, which is linked to the same station. So, the same station can have different sequence numbers for different trains. That is not a problem. Good. Any other questions? Yeah. So, uh, let us um, move to the next one, which is uh, ER diagram for this program, modeling uh, what all? resource centers, center coordinator. This is actually a relatively easy one. Um, so, instead of again doing everything on the board, let me just show this. Okay. So, we have a, uh, wait, something is missing. Okay, fine. Um, so, we have a faculty who is from an institute. So, institute is an entity, faculty is an entity, resource center is also an entity um, and it has a capacity. That is the only thing we are modeling, but actually you will have to have an ID. This diagram is incomplete. Um, so, I will go beat up the RS uh, students who <laughs> drew this. I will beat them up after the this thing, but there are a few corrections here. Uh, resource center certainly should have an identifier. Uh, in fact, all of these should have an identifier. So, this should be underlined faculty ID. Um, so, if you can note this, let us please, please note these corrections. We will put up a cleaned up one later. Mm. So, faculty is all of you are center coordinators for a particular resource center. Now, this diagram is allowing some flexibility uh, which may not really be required. So, among the flexibility it allows is that a resource center need not be an institute. Uh, so, you could have a resource center in some reliance world somewhere which is not even an institute. It also allows a faculty to be a center coordinator for a resource center which is not their institute. So, this gives you the flexibility. If you did not want that flexibility, there are alternatives to enforce that a resource center is an institute. How would you do that? How do you make sure a resource center is in? So, is an institute. 
But for example, uh, the, if institute is uh, and uh, there is specialization with the resource center, so it doesn't make any difference if it is institute. Reliance might be uh, treated as an institute. We can define that. Cool. Institute means it is an entity which has uh, some sort of common character name and ID and other um, things. Whether well, Tech Mahindra is the institute, yes, we can treat this as an institute. That so in a broader sense, is a difficult well, then one. We don't want f uh, a faculty to be from uh, Reliance World, for example. Yeah. So we may want to have a case which is a real institute, a college, uh, okay. uh, some other institution, and a resource center, um, which could be, um, which, yeah. So we could even uh, link a center coordinator to an institute. So the assumption is that some of these institutes are resource centers, and which ones? Only those which have a center coordinator, or, or maybe we can have an extra flag here, which is is a resource center. So there are many uh, alternative uh, designs. Okay, but in this one, uh, let us just make sure there are uh, no more errors here. This would be a primary key. Um, there would be an ID here. The attends here um, being many to one uh, makes sense. You cannot attend in more than one, and you don't have to attend. Therefore, this constraint is fine. Uh, you are from an institute, uh, so you may want to add an extra thing that every faculty member has to be from an institute, if you wish to. But then you may have some people who are uh, freelancers of some sort, not associated with the institute. So if you want to allow that, then you will not make this total. You can leave this as is. So those are decisions you would have to make. Uh, so for our design, this is reasonable. and. Um, yeah, faculty attending a resource center has a registration number, which is also useful. Um, now, what this is not modeling is the fact that you may have multiple courses. This is all for one course. If you have multiple courses, the same person may attend a resource center for different course. So actually, then this is not a resource center. This would be a course offering in a resource center. So then you would have a resource center which is a separate entity. This would become a course offering like a section right? similar to that. These are all sections of a course which happen to run at different resource centers. And then you would register for a section and the person is a center coordinator for a section. So that would be another alternative. So depending on what you model, you will have many different variations on this. So this design is okay for the specification, but it may need extension. Okay, any questions on this? There is also a solution here for the other one, um, the railway, um, which is basically the same thing, but I think there are a few, one or two mistakes in the constraints here. So again, we will fix this also before uh, you take a look at it. Uh, you will note, yeah. From train to station, what is the problem here? There is a constraint error here. But uh, this constraint says that a train can only be there in one station. So this arrow should go. Please note that. Okay? And there was one more. Yeah. Uh, track. What is the problem here? Hmm? This is, uh, no, a track is, it is, no, it is many to many. Each station, a station may be connected to many different stations. So this is again many to many, which means this arrow should not be there. Okay? So these two correct, we will make the corrections on this diagram. Uh, I think the rest is okay. Uh, from to, this is exactly as we drew it for train, all, all the rest is fine. Okay, so uh, any questions about either of these designs at this point? Um, we are almost out of time, but I want to give you a very quick demo of uh, the DIA uh, diagram editor, uh, which is, it runs on Linux, Windows, everywhere, and it has a lot of uh, modeling tools. I have one question. Yeah. Ask. Uh, we always say that any system we design, 
uh, it's part of some other system, right? A subsystem of something. Mm. So everything is a subsystem actually. Yeah. So can you reflect on that uh, with reference to any of those? To these designs? Uh, in any design. Um, or you want to comment on that? I, I, you know, I'd be happy to hear more from you. I mean, it's perfectly uh, meaningful. That no, no, usually in analysis and design yeah. uh, type of the exercises, we yes. usually represent the system boundary, saying that this is a subsystem which will ultimately fit into some bigger picture. Like so yes. saying this IST, uh, if you want to model it, it will fit into the bigger academic program of uh, IIT Mumbai or something. Mm -hmm. So that needs to come out in the ER model at some point of time, I think. So that will actually enable students to understand the scope of the system and also understand that it is not the standalone system which uh, they should make work, but it is uh, in the context of something that it should be working. Right. So um, at this level of teaching here, we have not got into this detail, but yes, if you are uh, you know, if you already have an existing system and you are adding something to it, you need to know that this is part of a bigger system. Uh, and then you would have to uh, note that you know, may maybe this ER diagram even is partial. So it assumes that there is something called instructor, which is part of the main ER system. So you are only showing a part of it. Um, and then you have to define what is the scope of this part, what all it deals with. So absolutely, um, if, if you are doing it as a part of a larger design, you have to scope out what is part of this and what is not part of this and can be used from the existing design. Absolutely. Good. I, I think we are getting some good software engineering insights. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. So, sorry for that uh, wasted time. So, this is the dia editor diagram editor. Now, what DIA has is uh, support for a number of different uh, modeling things. It, so, th this has flowchart, UML, um, ER. Okay. So, what we are going to do for our purpose is use UML class diagrams to uh, represent entities. So, let us call this class 1, attributes, sorry, A1, uh, we are not going to give types and so on. Uh, so, visibility, we are making it implementation. Otherwise, uh, in UML, it has this uh, plus minus uh, in sharp notation up front. Um, this is a hack, but if you want to underline it, if you say class scope in UML, it underlines it. So, okay. And now here is one more, A2, which is again implementation. We do not want to see operations. We want to see only attributes. There is an OK button at the bottom, which is kind of hidden because of the screen resolution. So, what we have now is A1, which is underlined, and A2, the two attributes of this. This is what we have been seeing. Now, we can uh, we can copy it and then modify this as we want. Now, then, uh, let us leave this uh, name alone for now. We can edit it later. Now, the next thing we need is um, relationship between these. Um, unfortunately, I think there is no relationship here. Uh, this has something which is not really relation. Uh, I do not know. I do not think this quite works. Okay. I think this does not allow you to put a name inside it. So, what we found useful is to go to ER and create a relationship. We can call it whatever we want, R1. Now, we can have uh, connectors between these. Uh, 
uh, so we can have the property, no arrows. Okay. Similarly, for the other one, we can create a connector. Okay, this is just the line. Although actually in the ER model, I'm not seeing it here. There is a, yeah, this is another option. Um, okay, so this is actually a better way of doing it. So let's delete that. Now, we can have properties. Is it total? It says no. Now, I change it to yes and you get the double line for a total relation. Okay. Anyway, so we can clean this up and we can create other things similarly. Um, now, one other thing is how do you make this an identifying relationship? Um, unfortunately, uh, that is… Huh? So, uh, what else? If you want to do um, specialization and so on, that is there in the UML tool. So, this is a fairly convenient tool to draw uh, diagrams. Some of you have used uh, VCO, that also provides uh, similar properties. Um, students uh, tend to go and use the simplest tools, they, they'll use PowerPoint or some such thing. And what is wrong with that? The problem is that, uh, you know, everything here becomes a diagram. So, instead of having this be conceptually something which Daya understands, you are going to have to draw boxes around attributes and so on. It's, yeah, the semantics is lost in, whereas Daya and Visio and other similar editors uh, have actually uh, created all these things with associated semantics. So, that you just click on certain options and immediately the diagram gets cleaned up. It, it shows you what you want. So, it is not actually lines, but it is a higher level thing. So, the nice thing about Daya is it is free, um, unlike Visio, which you have to pay for. Actually, I have one question to ask. Yeah. Uh, suppose the ER model that we are developing for mm. a case study is quite mm. complex. Mm. So, we would like to develop it as a series of models, right? Refining yeah. certain. Yeah. So, is there any way of checking the consistency of? Uh, yeah. So, that is another good question. In if you are breaking up a ER diagram into many pieces because it is too big. Um, one of the things which you should do is um, you define the attributes of a class in one place. <coughs> in all other places, simply use the class, do not show the attributes. That way, there will be no question of uh, attributes being inconsistent across different things. It is clear that it is an entity, but do not show any attributes, just hide them. Um, relationships, of course, should occur only once, uh, you should not repeat them. So, there will be no issue there. It is only entities which get repeated. Um, so, I think that should take care of consistency, um, but then how do you break it up? How do you break up a complex thing into pieces? You would like those pieces to be related in some way, um, yeah, and then it is easy to piece them together later. Um, I do not know if there is any scientific way of doing this, but uh, certainly you would try to break up an organization's ER diagram into things which are related to each other, so that the breakup is clean. Say for example, if I have a person, uh, say uh, relation that I, or entity rather I have identified, hmm. uh, and later on I would like to refine this person into maybe the uh, student and faculty and registrar yeah. and things like that, right? Yes. So, uh, to make my ER model simple in the first go, it is like say developing an DFD or something like that, right, or flow mm -hmm. chart which has the simplistic zeroth level view and then keep on refining it. Yes. So, is there any way of having that series of such ER models and uh, maintaining the consistency across mm, these I, I do not know much about this. Uh, then uh, my answer is I do not know. Okay. If, because if when you I look know at some more, please tell us. I'd be no, no, I, I really do not know. I myself yeah. is trying to find out answers for this. In UML, you do have ways to tackle it, but in 
uh, when it comes to your data modeling, there is uh, apparently at the moment people are not looking at so it. it seems. Yeah, I'm not aware. Maybe whatever you can do for UML, you can apply to this. Uh, but I, I'm, I don't know this part of UML, so I, I cannot answer your question. Okay. Maybe you can answer it better than I can. No, no, at the moment I don't know. I have to ponder it yeah. for from the database perspective. I haven't done that. Okay. But I will like to at some point. Like rational rows. Yeah, if you uh, want to take the diagram and convert it to something else. Uh, or something yeah. else or uh, converting this diagram for some uh, uh, error checking parts. Or even we can, uh, if we have a big diagram, we can have a scalar diagrams. That can be done in rational rows. Yes. Uh, that's true. Um, so, so this is only to draw diagrams, which yes. uh, which is useful for uh, present paper presentation or uh, something like. Yes. That. No, that no. I think we should not. I mean, when we are teaching students, we are learning the concept forward engineering or those rational rows tool things are really will hide many things or show. I, I mean, in database course, I don't advise using such things. Yeah, it may make sense to start with something simple yes, because students just learn right. these concepts and later they can graduate to uh, better My tools. My point like is that uh, this is a tool for only draw the diagrams. Yes. Uh, if, you, if you want to make a scalar, means if you want to go for a, a higher version, then you must use some tools. Uh, that is it's true. That um, is my point. It probably is beyond the scope of a database course. That's what you're that saying. Is, it, that it is okay. It is. It is a part a of software the engineering software engineering course. Software engineering. Yes, so certainly, you want to take these additional issues into account. And mm -hmm. yeah. Good. Any other questions, or shall we move to lunch? Okay. Lunch it is. Thank you. <laughs>